What if becoming an expert pilot were as simple as putting on a cap? So our system is one of the first of its kind. It's a brain stimulation system. Uh, it sounds kind of sci-fi, but there's large scientific basis for uh, the development of our system. The specific task we were looking at is piloting an aircraft, which requires a synergy of both cognitive and motor performance. When you learn something, your brain physically changes. Connections are made and strengthened in a process called neuroplasticity. And it turns out that certain functions of the brain, like speech and memory, are located within very specific regions of the brain, about the size of your pinky. What our system does is actually target those changes to specific regions in the brain as you learn. The method itself is actually quite old. In fact, the ancient Egyptians 4,000 years ago used electric fish to stimulate and reduce pain in certain areas of their head. Even Ben Franklin applied currents to his head, but the rigorous uh, scientific investigation of these methods uh, really started in about the early 2000s. And we're building off that research to target and personalize the stimulation in the most effective way possible. Your brain is gonna be very different than my brain when we perform a task. And what we found is that in specific circumstances, the brain stimulation seems to be particularly effective at actually improving learning. One of the aspects of learning we're most interested in is how the expert brain functions. Part of what we wanted to do when we invited expert pilots to perform our experiment with us was that we wanted to better understand what their brains look like as they're performing this very particular training that we've set up. We were hoping to modulate the brains of novice pilots who had never seen this task before in order to try to make their brain states uh, more similar to the experts. What that means is essentially we were able to take a group of individuals and train them to a similar level than we could without the brain stimulation. The method employed of brain stimulation relies on actual physical contact with the scalp, a head cap through conductive gel to apply the currents to the, the skin or the scalp of the head. Uh, it combines three modes of imaging and stimulation. One is called functional near-infrared spectroscopy. This measures the blood flow changes within the brain. The other is called electroencephalogram, EEG. This measures electrical potentials at the scalp that are indicative of brain activity within that location. And the third modality is the actual stimulation paradigm, where we can turn on or off certain regions of the brain and actually image that process in real time with those other two modalities. The idea there is to actually visualize the changes in the brain that we're inducing and that are occurring naturally. And this is a kind of a way to target or personalize or adapt the stimulation to the individual in real time. What works for you as a novice might not be the same paradigm that works for the expert. The actual neurological effects can persist for hours. Those effects take days or weeks and practice to consolidate. It's the same learning mechanism. We're just amplifying it or boosting it with the stimulation. The study showed that novice pilots demonstrated a 33% increase in skill consistency compared to those who received the sham stimulation. Neurostimulation technology is, I consider it to still be in its infancy. Current technology uses a simpler, non-custom interface to connect with the brain. The system designed by HRL allows for customization of the stimulation, which is key. The field in general is very new as uh, we understand more about the brain and the technology that we're working with, we'll be able to better help people, whether that be in training, in learning new skills or improving their performance, or whether they've uh, had a traumatic brain injury or a stroke, um, some disease or pathology that prevents them from uh, having full function over their faculties. Whether we can use this technology to help those people and to help people that are simply looking to improve their performance is a question for the future and something that we're working on very closely now. The study has been published in Frontiers in Human Neuroscience in February 2016.